Brazilian delegation on its way now to Copenhagen. Probably, we're not exactly sure, but all the governors from uh, the 27 states of Brazil all going because they have so much tied up and so much at stake in what's being discussed here at Copenhagen. They've got sustainable uh, development projects here, for example, in the state of Acre. Uh, they're looking at uh, limiting cattle ranching to prevent the massive deforestation that's been caused by the cattle farms over the last 20 years. Uh, they're looking at... Uh, more sustainable production of Brazil nuts, they're looking at uh, rubber production and so forth, but they need that money from Copenhagen. They need the money to be de de given to them by the uh, developed countries in order to get their energy started, to get their momentum started. We've seen uh, inside the rainforest, we've had a look down the rivers, we've seen uh, pink river dolphins, uh, we've seen uh, all manner of things here in the forest, but what we're concentrating on tonight is whether or not, um, let's, vamos. We just want to get our boatman to move a little faster there. Uh, just concentrating on tonight is how this summit is kicking off and what sort of progress we're going to see. We've got reports tonight from China, uh, from India, from the United States, and of course uh, reports from Brazil. We've been out about here in the state of Acre uh, to see uh, exactly what sort of problems uh, the government is facing in terms of deforestation and what it hopes to do to sort them out. Here we go. The Amazon rainforest is 3.3 million square kilometers and shrinking. It's a true wilderness and everyone's agreed now it's the engine room driving the world's climate. Crossing the forest is like crossing Europe. How much carbon is there in, in this one? Uh, I would say it would be probably on the order of 10 tons. 10 tons of carbon. Professor Foster Brown has worked here for 17 years. He thinks deforestation is changing the way the forest functions, upsetting the balance of its ecosystem and also the weather it generates. He's concerned that an unexpected drought four years ago is an example. The rivers shrank and thousands of trees caught fire. Suddenly all the talk in the Amazon was of climate change. A rapidly accelerating trend perhaps, but hard to prove. It's like a, a, a truck on a slope. When it stopped, you can put a small rock in front of it and it will hold it. Once that truck starts moving, uh, not even a big rock will stop it. This is on yellow what's already mapped as deforestation. At the National Space Program, they're mapping deforestation by satellite and publishing it online. Green shows protected land, the pink is slash and burn areas cleared for soybeans and cattle production. When the website was launched, the government responded. So now the rivers here in Acre State in the far northwest are patrolled by environment police, tipped off by the daily changes spotted by the satellite. But the area they cover is truly vast, and extra funds from Copenhagen could help this. But the cattle ranches are key. Almost 20% of the planet's carbon emissions comes from burning trees to clear land for grazing. Sidney Zamora is a new breed of cattle rancher. He rotates pastures and his workers plant mixed species of grass, drawing three times the productivity from the same land. Modern technology introduced by government advisors. His neighbor is the opposite. This ranch is failing and the ground is being exhausted. He'll be tempted to clear more forest. Changing habits is heavy work. Farmers, uh, they learn with their fathers, with their grand, grand, grandfathers, uh, to do cattle ranching that way. So you need, uh, you need to change uh, the culture of cattle ranching in, in the region. Brazil has nine separate state governments in the Amazon region alone. And then there's Colombia, Peru, Bolivia, Venezuela and others. Each has its own set of priorities, its own levels of deforestation, and its own laws. Copenhagen, at best, will produce one set of broadly agreed principles. The national details, that's a whole other challenge. The extent of the cattle ranching is breathtaking. Like giant golf courses, thousands of badly managed pastures eat into the wilderness. There are 27 states in all of Brazil. No wonder almost all of them are sending delegates to Denmark. 
OK, after our boatman. Taking his time a little bit there on the water, we've made it ashore. We're now coming in to see one of the indigenous industries here uh, in Acre State, which they hope will replace the massive cattle ranching slash and burn techniques. I'm also joined by our guest, Richard Rasmussen, who's a pretty well-known character here in Brazil, something of a wildlife expert, a bit of a, yeah, bit of a bit mad of, guy as well. I've I know, heard. I know. <laughs> I'm absolutely normal. <laughs> Regular guy, yeah. But it's interesting, this rubber tapping, yes, isn't it? Yes, it's very it? important. This is a work, you see, they're extracting the, the rubber, and they're not killing the plants. So, as you can see, all these cuts are made for generations, and they're keeping the, the, the wood of the, the tree alive. So that's very, very important. And they actually, these guys can live on this kind of work. So uh, I think this is quite uh, an important uh, um, issue, not only because they're working here on this, on this place, conserving, they depend, the forest, they, they depend on the forest being alive. Being healthy. Being healthy. So, now, of course, 20 years ago, it was a different story. The rubber tappers and the cattle ranchers that yeah, were arriving were at yes. war, weren't they? Yes, but you have to, um, you know, in, in the Brazilian history, we had to occupy 40 years ago this land. So it, it was a really big problem. It's, it's, we, we have to look at it on a big picture, you know. And nowadays, things changed. And we have to change with the changes that, that, the, that the new, you know, the, the new understanding of conservation now is the giving government, us. Now, the government's helped fund the condom factory so that the latex here can be used in production in See? the state of Acre so that the whole thing from start to finish happens here, giving work to the people here. Yeah, they have to sell this, this rubber to someone, so I think that's important. And also, they're living here and bringing people like tourists to have a, a life experience here. And that's amazing, you know, because then you're in the same place, you're uh, uh, joining different uh, economic values to this place. And this is, I think, this is the future, really. Now, in Copenhagen, of course, they'll be saying, the delegation uh, from here, Governor Marquez, going up to Copenhagen, he will say, look, we're producing this latex. It's, not, it's making some money for the people, yes. but we think it should be more expensive. Why? Because it's helping preserve the rainforest. Therefore, everyone should help raise the price. Do you think that's fair? Well, uh, I don't like very much, like, uh, the, uh, the thing is, maintaining the forest as this, uh, alive, it costs. And I don't like very much of, you know, giving, just giving money. I think it's, you're, you're transforming this work in an, an important uh, issue, an important way of, of economic. So uh, I think probably we have a lot of, of discussions on it, but probably I think it's fair if you pay back, like we have a, a lot of things that come out from the forest, like a different, uh, at active uh, medications and we are supplying we are suppliers of this of these uh, medications or of, of pharmacies so i think it's fair we we get this money back ask him how long he's been doing this oh he quanto tempo você tá trabalhando 45 anos this guy is Chico Mendes cousin Chico Mendes the famous rubber tapper who was from, killed yes yes yeah. and Chico Mendes actually worked in this forest worked in the same is this exact tree uh, this is quite important. Chico Mendes worked for many years on this tree. This tree was cut by Chico Mendes. And, and this is it's, it's symbolic, you know. Uh, and this guy is working for, for okay, 40 years. 45, 45 years. years. 45 years. Okay, Richard, that's fascinating. Thanks very much indeed. We're going to talk to you later on in the okay. program. Our thanks to Sebastian again for okay. showing us his tray.